But we begin this morning with the conviction this past week of one of New York's most powerful politicians, former Speaker of the State Assembly, Sheldon Silver, on corruption charges. 71-year-old Sheldon Silver walked out of federal court a defeated man. He drifted through a sea of cameras and reporters, but said little, vowing only to appeal. Ultimately, I believe after we file the legal challenges, we'll have a different result. After the verdict was read in court, Silver was expressionless, guilty on all seven counts, including four counts of honest services fraud, two counts of extortion, and one count of money laundering. Prosecutors alleged Silver took bribes and kickbacks in exchange for favorable treatment. In a brief statement, U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara said, Today, Sheldon Silver got justice, and at long last, so did the people of New York. Everyone else, you know, had their opinion. But at that time, I didn't feel they were respecting my opinion or, you know, it, I just felt a lot of pressure. Arlene Phillips says she sent a note to the judge asking to be excused because she was stressed and felt pressured by her fellow jurors who did not respect her views. Phillips says she was the only member of the jury who thought Silver was not guilty until she reviewed the evidence. Defense attorney Deborah Blum says the turmoil in the jury room could give Silver ammunition for an appeal. When a juror says that they're being pressured by other jurors, which is what I believe her note said to the judge, that is a ground for appeal. Meanwhile, former Senate Majority Leader Dean Skelos, a Long Island State Senator from Rockville Center, is also on trial facing corruption charges that he traded political favors for jobs for his son, Adam. All of this following several convictions in the last few years of leading state elected officials. So what's going on? What does it mean for residents? Well, joining us now is Lawrence Levy. He is a political analyst with uh, Hofstra University. And uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Thanks Levy. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, people are still uh, surprised even, uh, some, especially some of the supporters of Shell. And silver. His attorney's already indicating that they'll appeal. What would be his chances for a, an appeal here? Well, you know, Yogi Berra famously said, or is reported to have said, that it ain't over till it's over. And when it comes to convictions of political leaders, um, there's some truth to that. I know everybody says, I'm going to win on appeal, but we've had cases in recent years of uh, high ranking New York State political leaders being convicted by juries but being uh, exonerated on appeal. Yeah, particularly uh, Joe Bruno, Bruno, the Senate Majority uh, Leader. And a, and a, a decade before that, Mel Miller, and there have been others. And there have been many others, but in the last couple of years, there's been a bunch of them. Right. So what is going on well, here? Well, we are know, covering I'm, I'm, the... I'm not a lawyer, but in, in talking to political, uh, to, to legal analysts, it was pretty clear to them and, and, and others that this case that his lawyers brought on, Shelley Silver's lawyers brought on, was really designed for an appeals court. Uh, he didn't testify. Or he doesn't have to testify. And this is all aimed at essentially saying that the government misapplied the honest services statute. So there's some precedent in the past with uh, Joseph right. Bruno for uh, being able to reverse these verdicts. So, meanwhile, though, uh, because of this string of uh, trials and charges and convictions uh, and even some being reversed upon appeal, we hear a strong reaction from folks when we ask them about They're probably the most uh, cynical is, uh, you know, they're all crooks. We hear that. And then people well, I don't think, I, actually, I have to tell you, I covered politics for years and years and years. I was chief political columnist for Newsday, and I do not believe that all politicians are crooks. I know a lot of guys who I think are honest and are, are in it for the right reasons, but I can understand the public cynicism because... There seems to be one trial after another. And what this does, what this, you know, beyond Shelley Silver's life or Dean Skelos's life, is whether this creates energy for change in uh, ethics legislation and, 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 and well, whether it will affect the everyday conduct of public officials. Yeah, because, you know, the milder form of criticism is it's business as usual in Albany. But, you know, this has given ammunition to the critics of, uh, of uh, government in New York, uh, particularly good government advocates. They're saying that it's time high time for us to have public financing to get the dirty money out. Will this uh, give that uh, cause uh, any fuel? Well, every scandal seems to advance the cause another slice of bread. You rarely get half a loaf, much less a whole loaf. This is such uh, high-profile stuff that you may see uh, much more uh, change than in the past. Well, and then meanwhile, uh, you have the fact that uh, uh, fo folks are saying that uh, perhaps this means we should pay them full-time, make them full-time lawyers and take out all outside income. And, and you hear a number of people uh, uh, voicing support for that idea. You know, Could that perhaps gain some steam? A, a former assemblyman, Richard Brodsky, well-respected, very smart guy, wrote a column where he said that's probably a bad idea. 
It'll limit the why is that? Well, it'll limit the number of people who can run because unless you're going to pay people a lot of money. Uh, 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 you know, to go back and forth, um, you're going to limit the pool of folks who can afford to do it. And it also, you know, won't necessarily make a difference because you can, uh, his example was interesting. He said you could work for a funeral home as an undertaker and, and, and that wouldn't be allowed, but you could own the funeral home and live off the profits and that would be allowed. So there are all kinds of loopholes when you try to legislate against morality. But there are some things that, that uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a consensus that could be done. And one is uh, public financing of campaigns. I mean, many of the tape recordings that we heard in the trials were of trying to manipulate major companies through the use of their LLCs, certain kind of corporation, to donate vast sums of money to campaigns. If you took that out, you'd eliminate some of the motive. Yeah, and what would this all cost the taxpayer, though, if you'd pay in the more? And then you're also paying for the finances. Well, what the reformers would say is that, A, in a budget as big as New York's, you know, fifty, sixty million dollars is a small price to pay for more ethical government so that you as a taxpayer and as an individual can feel that what's being done is being done for the right reasons and not because of the wrong money. Well, here you have one of the uh, things that is shocking to a lot of people on the heels of his conviction. Uh, they've already indicated that he, he wants to get his pension. Uh, and in New York, even if you're convicted of a crime, you still get to keep your pension. Now folks are saying this has got to change. People convicted of crimes do not deserve their pension. Right. That's another reform that you've heard. But um, if, if you think you're going to get uh, 200 and some odd legislators to uh, uh, vote uh, uh, to uh, uh, lose their pension <laughs> right. in case, in their minds, God forbid, I'm wrongly accused and I get convicted, uh, I think you've got another thing coming to you. But that's also gotten in the way of any pension reform, which is one of the biggest liabilities for the state, not only now, but going forward through the decades. Uh, there's real questions about whether we can afford these pensions. Well, I think that's going off in another direction. But, uh, you know, it, 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 the possibility of of taking somebody's pension away and then ratcheting up the penalties for bad behavior is is probably a, a, an idea that would have some impact. I'm just telling you that politically, the chances of it happening are slim to none. Mm, yeah, exactly. So in the meanwhile, what do you think of what uh, U.S. Attorney Preparar has been doing, and will it change business as usual in Albany? Well, he's become the sheriff of State Street, as as they say up in Albany. He's the guy who's put the pressure on, and uh, uh, there's no doubt that he's going to keep the pressure on. Whether that results in him going after higher-profile targets or going after individual members, we have to see. All right. Well, it's ongoing. As I said, the Skelos trial is not uh, settled at this point, but right. we do know uh, what has happened with Sheldon Silver. People still trying to absorb what this means for the past uh, situation of politics as usual. We'll see if it changes. Lawrence Levy, political analyst at Hofstra University, thanks for coming in and Thank talking to us today. Me.